Welcome back to the final game of today. The European SPL Week 5 is going to conclude after this one. It's Energy up against Mouse Sports. Let's have a little look at the standings first of all to see exactly how this one looks on paper going into it. And this is big for Energy and Obey because Energy, they if they find a 2-0 here, they really put Obey against the wall. Yeah. Energy is in control of their own destiny as long as they're able to consistently find 2-0 victories. Rival losing that game to SK really hurts their plus minus it doesn't look likely that they'll finish top two. Yeah, an awkward situation then for Rival to be in there. may just have to resign fate to come into the placement round. Energy, though, and Obey are the two real horses in the race. And, well, Mouse could be a factor here that could cause Energy some problems. They could, and Mouse is uh, not really in danger of falling into that sixth seed. They're pretty locked to number five, but I'm a big believer in getting momentum and confidence coming into a land like this. I mean, it's going to be a, a, a grueling grind fest for wherever you end up if you're here at the placement stages. So I think that getting victories in week five and week six is, is very critical. I agree with that, but I'm also scared of showing strategies just beforehand. You're sure. a couple of weeks out from the placement round, and do you want to bring out your A game against Energy as Mouse here if you're going to be fifth anyway? You want to bring out your A game with picks that everyone knows you already That's played. what I mean, yeah. I mean, it, so if support Cherio Naja. Yeah, you're gonna put uh, you're gonna put N Naja for Cherio. You're gonna pick Cupid for Dardes, and yep. it, it'll be weird, but it'll be Mouse. And, and if you could find wins in that way, even just one, I think that SK, no matter the outcome of season, uh, of week six, I think that th they probably got a little bit of confidence from that last set. I don't know how you couldn't with the way that their season has gone and able to take a game off rival and make game one very very close as well. Well, I think that that's what Mouse is looking for. And talk about Mouse a little bit more. Obviously, they made a lot of roster changes on and off throughout this year from the team that were once upon a time elevated at the start of the year. Had to make three roster changes. Only Chario and Dardes remaining. But Chario and Dardes have made roster changes in the fall split. They're both now in new roles. They're duo lane together, but Dardes in Hunter, Chario in the support role. And it's looked pretty good. So far, I don't, I don't think Dardes has knocked anybody's socks off. No one's like sure. super excited to see Dardes in ADC because he's killing it every game. Well, I think they miss him on support. That's why, because he was a fun, entertaining support to watch. He was one of the best supports in the world. And mm. now you go to a middle of the pack ADC because, of course, you are. I mean, it's not like Dardes is going to come in and be the best ADC in the league right away. How do you know? It just because we've seen it and he hasn't done it. That's fair. He, he's just not the best ADC in the league right now. Not to say that he couldn't become that, but this is definitely an 11th hour change for Mouse Sports. But if this is the way that they feel that they are more likely to make it the DreamHack Atlanta, you can't really fault them for it. And I, and I think that Frostiac has done pretty well in the jungle so far. Again, no one has been like, oh, man, Fro got to watch what Frostiac's doing this He's week. He's back. He's back. Can't wait. But Frostiac's been serviceable so Doing far. his job. Yeah, doing exactly. Job. So it, it's okay for now. It's just a matter of what they come up with for LAN. I think that their strategies have historically been very difficult to solve in mm. quick time during LAN. So Mouse Sports, I, I don't blame them. if They're not really worried about these next two weeks. They're already basically locked in a fifth seed. Get some strats ready for that placement stage because I think that's their best chance to win games there. Well, let's get into picks and bands then. Energy, we've not really spoken too much about, but as we said, they're in the race to make it to the placement, well, to DreamHack directly if they can make top two. Dignitas clearly out in front with the most solid situation in their hands. Whether they're one or two is uh, still an open debate, but Energy have the shot to solidify themselves by just winning, winning the rest of their games. But they need to 2-0 the rest of their games. It's not just winning the sets. It's the, it, the margin of victory is important right. here. So energy usually up against Mouse. It's kick the feet up. You know, Emilito probably has a beer open right next to him. Win like game he's chilling. One. So they win one game one, then game two, Mouse bounce back and win. And then Adapt is like, okay, I'll take my feet off the desk. Now. Yeah, exactly. Well, it can't even get to that point. I yeah. mean, you have to you have to be feet on the ground, locked in, ready to go from minute one because this is this is critical that energy win both. Well then, into the bands we go. Naja and Athena, real shots towards Cherio straight away. Yes, yep. the Naja is for support here. Freya and Chernabog leaves Amaterasu open, who is the biggest riser, I'd say, in picks and bands in the last two weeks and heading towards Worlds. I think that's going to continue. Has Ama been not outside oh, the top yeah. three? Not just like top three in total, but I mean first pick and then return two. Yeah. I, I don't know the last time she was. I mean, she has been consistently picked in that area. Definitely been there for sure. And Mao's going to respond with the Sir Cut Jingwei. Sir Cut Jungle? Yes. I sure? think so. No, I'm not. I but, was like, eh. But I think so. I mean, Cherio didn't want to play Assassins when he was playing the Assassin role, except for except for Naja and except for a little bit of Hunbats. I don't think we're going to see a lot of Sir Cut support. Hunbats support. Hunbats support. He does have a slow. No. No, don't do that in your games, well, unless you're in game with Taco or DM Brandon. They're the only two times you're allowed to run combat support, okay? And as long I as you, gave the official go-ahead of that. And as long as you rush Frostbound Hammer, then you've got an attack speed slow and a slow on your auto attacks. 
That's CC. He's a genius. Discordia also locked in now for potentially the mid lane. Can support too. This is why I don't like Mouse <laughs> because there is Discordia has about the same amount of CC as Nox. No. Actually, no. No. Right. no Nox better than Hunbats. Better than Hunbats. There yes, we go. But go they're on. not playing Hunbats support. They're not playing Discordia support. Discordia has been Big Man Tings' go to pick all year long in the mid lane. Agony was. I'd say Agni more than Discordia, but yeah, Discordia. No, I think it's been Discor two. Discordia or Raijin have been is probably his most play, most played two gods. If I had to, if I had to wager, the Alpwash. Would you like to wager? No, I'm not in the mood for gambling right now. You're always in the mood for gambling. What do you mean? I just don't know about taking that gamble. It doesn't feel like the risk rewards are worthwhile. It's because I'm right. Alpwash, it's very rare that you are, but then you're wearing a green tie that looks like that on camera, so you're not right. I love this tie. Alpwash for Yamin in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, Energy has been pit playing this quite a bit. You get to go on the aggressive with Ama Mercury anyways, so you're not too worried about the counter initiation. Sure. You can just drop the corpses on yourself, and even when you die, it's going to persist, and it's going to deal relevant damage and give relevant zone. I think Energy is really feeling confident that they're going to be the aggressors in this match, and when you are the aggressor, Aplash is very difficult to stop. Interesting to see the Hatchiman pick up here. We don't see too much Hatchiman as often these no, days we don't. as well, especially over likes of even Ho Yi's on yeah. the list more than Hatchiman at the moment. I agree, but it, I love it with Mercury because you already got great objective, but then you drop the Heavenly Banner, you up Mercury's attack speed. He's already getting more attack speed now than he used to with that Golden Blade in the drafts or in the build, so I, I think I like this Hachiman pick. The I also Odin, like though. Cerberus. That Odin's nasty. That Odin, man. though, that Odin is a really hot one, especially when you look at Amaterasu, Mercury, Arposh, and Hachiman. All have no leap ability to, to get out of side the ring. Just Cerberus I'm just, does. I'm just a bit concerned on the follow-up that's going to be inside that Odin cage. That's, that's, my, that's my only concern. I love the Odin pick. I think it's great. And it's so good that it's like, who cares how good the follow-up is? Because it shuts down Mercury so hard, Ama so hard, Arposh, and Hachiman. I, th I think it's great. And if I'm a Mealzy, because I'm, I'm guessing that's Odin's support, I think you have to go Phantom. I mean, you just get you just get bodied by it too hard. Game one, energy or mouse? Energy. I think they understand the stakes. On picks and bands alone, energy or mouse? Not names. Mouse. Oh, there we go. What do you guys at home think? Have a little think about that one. As we get into game, it's Finch and Taco standing by to bring you this energy versus mouse. Thanks, Hindu. Thanks, Agro. Energy up against mouse. Game one, a game energy very, very much need to win to make sure they can try and secure their spot in the top two. And Mouse would like to improve their standings as well. But poor Cheerio might be in trouble. Leap probably going to be selected here first overall to get him out of dodge. And that will indeed be the case as support for Mouse takes out. Goon Squad from, from Energy. They're not done with it just yet, though. Cheerio going to get forced blink. out of his blink, too. I don't think that Emilito would have really been able to do much against him here, but he's going to harass him with the Heavenly Banner even further just to make sure that Cheerio doesn't get the back as quickly as he would have liked. That's really the reason I think Emilito was continuing that pressure, was to delay the back from Cheerio. Now, it will not be impactful. Cheerio should certainly make it back in time to, to be in the lane, but Emilito and Emilzi might be able to establish some lane positioning if they're willing to move up and bully Dardes. I think that... Energy's duo should have no problems as far as Outclear is concerned. That's why we see Cheerio with the Odin, maybe meant to mitigate a little bit of that lane pressure. But even still, if Cheerio commits the jump for lane clear, there's always the chance of collapse between Emilzi and Emilito. That's so curious, though. If Emilito was willing to Heavenly Banner Dardes, why not do it a little bit sooner, right? So he'd still have Heavenly Banner here for the wave. He should certainly still have it, as you see it coming in on the backside, but... If he'd done a little bit earlier, he could have had it right at the beginning, maybe even been in it. I don't know. It ends up working out. It's just fine, but I don't know. I just like watching him like, yeah, it's fine. Cherio taking a whole lot of poke here. Nice dot or burst damage there from Emilzi to follow it up. And Dardis could be in trouble. Emilito trying to find the autos where he can, but Dardis will manage to make it out of range. And one more persistent gust is going to mean the end of the first creep wave here. Jumping in aggressively is Cherio. There's a mini wave here, so Emilito might not be willing to keep going, but he's undeterred. Heavenly Banner hits both. Good damage comes out in favor of the energy duo lane. We haven't seen as much Hachiman, I feel like, lately, right? He still certainly pops up here and there, but he's fallen off a bit from when he was played in almost every game. It's a pick that's mostly reserved, I think, for North America right now. Clout, for example, sure. still definitely loves to, to run his Hachiman from time to time. But I, I think the main reason why we haven't really seen too much Hachi in, in recent uh, sets is simply because of the fact that other hunters can do oh it. Oh my as god, Dardes is just dead. Emilito finds first blood and removes him from the game. I think perhaps he wasn't expecting that much damage. 
I'll be honest, Finch, I, I didn't think that Dardis wouldn't try to run away there. Right. I figured He's kinda stuck around. that energy showing that they went to invade Mouse's purple buff would mean that Mouse would almost certainly back off there and just wait until energy had returned so that they didn't get flanked from behind. Dardis decided to play the lottery, however, and he didn't have a winning ticket. Instead, they kind of put themselves in a bad spot, but a response on the right-hand side. Nika finds Maniac. Looks like off a gank from Frostiac on the right-hand side. That is a nice answer for them. Maniac does have teleport, though. He'll be right back to lane. No problem, but a nice kill nonetheless. Nika probably yelling at Dardis right now. If, he, if he'd waited just 10 more seconds <laughs> That'd to That would be first blood, right? That would have been first blood for Mouse. But as it currently stands, Emilito will in fact get credit for that last hit. So more an issue for Dardes than Cheerio, if you ask me, simply because yes. it just means Emilito can finish that Devos a little bit sooner. If he does intend to rush the Devourer's Gauntlets, no guarantee on this, but I would expect him to once he has, since he has such a gold lead advantage. Emil Z. Going to recognize Tings has already dropped those mid harpies. Not much you can do low on mana. So instead, he'll return back over to the dual lane. I think it is nice, though, that Frostiac was able to be a part of that kill in solo because adapting is on this Mercury pick. And that's scary for a ton of reasons. Mercury is very good right now with Golden Blade just in general. Also adapting very good on the Mercury. I like adapting on a hard carry assassin anyway. Anything to give Frosty a bit of an edge over adapting would definitely help. I was waiting for you to say I like adapting on anything. Yes, that's <laughs> so, a good point. Yeah, oh, just all hard carry, please. Uh, most people would probably <laughs> agree with that one for sure. But that is a, a nice start, though, for Frosty Act. And it also makes energy. They have to keep it in the back of their minds now. Hold that thought. Emilito going aggressive here on the Cherio. Now Emil's is going to be prompted to adapt forward, but they won't be able to find a kill just yet. Adapting, however, still hugging this corner side. Mouse, they don't know that he's here. But Frostyak's here as well, and Energy trying to play this <laughs> these pocket tens they have might be walking into pocket jacks if they're not careful. Frostyak is right there waiting in the jungle, but fortunately they play it cool. They stay on the back end. Major Look does poke down Cheerio, but nothing more will come from it now that Adapting has revealed himself. I kind of wish that Energy would have been poised to strike there. Cherio jumped over the wall. That's the expense of his escape. And right. I almost feel like Energy could have possibly found a, another pick there onto, onto Cherio, but instead he will live to see another day, and the purple sure. buff will also go back into Mouse's control. That's the primary reason why we even saw Frosty to begin with on this dual lane side. It's not so much to match the rotation of adapting as much as it was to protect his own team's jungle. Dardes low on the left-hand side, adapting nearby. He's going to be the pulling back with a special delivery, and another kill comes out for Energy Esports. They take down Dardes for the second time. It looks like adapting expended the Sonic Boon to make that one happen. Unfortunate if you're, if you're Dardes this time around. Still not level 5, didn't have the airstrike to try and create a little bit more distance, and had used the agility, I believe, after burning out the purification beats. Pretty much the perfect gank if you're adapting. It really was perfect for him to be able to find a nice kill and to slow down Dardes. And that's important, too, because the special delivery is not going to work against the Jinglei often, right? Agility should be able to get her out of there in most cases. But that time, Dardes was so low. Adapting uses it as the last option to try and lock him down and get a little bit more damage in. Perfect to set up the kill. Now, adapting much more on even footing with Frostiak. Also adapting, finding the Sonic Boom in the first place, I think, is largely because of the fact that Mouse had just gotten their purple buff dropped for them by Frostiac, and so maybe they had a, a false sense of security there, knowing that their jungler had just stopped by. Surely there's no way that Energy are going to look to play aggressive. We know that adapting was hovering this uh, the sector, but he was forced to back off after realizing that Frostiac was here, so I'm okay to stay pushed up in the lane. And then the next thing you know, it's Sonic Boom from way downtown up getting the punishment is look at that Emilito had a sentry board he just dropped it down there behind the gold fury in between his purple buff and that gold fury pit and had a regular ward as well if you want to be safe over in your duo lanes that's how you do it ladies and gentlemen as Cherio drops down the cage on adapting but so far there's not much there Sonic Boom finds Frosty yet that sends him running for the heels a Milzy is also quite low and so he'll have to fall back too no more will come from it on that side as a maniac takes quite a bit of poke but maybe not Cherio wants a little bit more here Yemen, though, unleashing the crypt so far on the big man Tings, forcing him into that escape route there on the Discordia. Cherio also going to end up jumping into mid, but to the safety of his T1 tower, he's got zero interest in trying to contest here. Frostiac looked like he wanted to help back up Cherio. Whoa. Hold that phone right now, Finch, because Nika 
bit off a little bit more than he could chew there, thinking that he was going to get the solo kill onto Maniac. Well, the ultimate was expended from Maniac, but not from Nika. Perhaps Maniac was able to catch him with that Stygian Torment and pull him under tower. That's got to be what I'm thinking happened there, as Nika definitely ends up getting punished on right-hand side, gifting back that kill he found earlier thanks to Frosty Axe pressure. And that's all that Maniac needed to get back on track with yeah. this laning phase. It's almost as if nothing ever happened. In fact, I would even argue that Nika is at a little bit of a disadvantage here. And pretty sure we also got a, a nice little replay to show what exactly happened right before Maniac found that kill to begin with. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's go back and see that kill that Maniac was able to find here on Nika. Ghastly Breath is coming out. And yes, Stygian and Torment catches him during the jump. He wouldn't have had time to use the ultimate. Perfect for Maniac. Mind games all around, and it's not over just yet. Nika showing that he doesn't have an escape available any longer. Going to go into the washing machine, but that was mostly just a bait. He wanted adapting and a maniac to just back off. That was enough to at least clear him some space. And look at on the left-hand side, trying to make use of this extended pressure in solo is Frostyak pushing deep into the jungle of energy. But there's really nothing there for them to find. That's a good job from Imolito and, uh, and from... Gammon to play safely, recognize that they wouldn't have their jungler here to even up the numbers. It does hurt Frostyak, though, that Nika would get soloed shortly after Frostyak gave him a little bit of a lead from sure. that gank because Frostyak at this stage, I don't think can really afford to spend that much time in the solo side of the map. Otherwise, energy are just going to dismantle Mouse Sports jungle in mid and duo. Yeah, he really can't afford to head over to this side because Imolito and Amulzi have so much pressure on the duo side, right? So that means that Frostyak, his hand is a little bit forced, I would say, to lean a little bit more heavier on the duo side, which means that Nika is essentially on his own over there on the right-hand side, at least for the time being, and adapting is free to kind of go wherever they feel like they have their best opportunity. They thought they had a chance there with Nika, but he does a good job forcing them back with the Whirlwind of Rage and Steel. Three members from Mouse looking to defend these oracles, and they will be successful. Frosty Oracle X. secured! That's all that matters. <laughs> they they need the vision, though. Uh, looking at Energy's roster, uh, there is only very brief moments, I would imagine, that Mouse can actually get away with trying to burn out these objectives in comparison to Energy, who can just siege them immediately. You sure. Matarasu, you got Adapting, and um, Emilito. That's so much damage, as is, for any objective. Man, adapting was maybe, what, a few seconds early for the blue buff spawn on the Chaos side of the map. Unfortunately, not going to be able to steal that one away. Golden Blade would have made quick work of it, which he has now completed, and would have certainly been able to kept right on moving. But, you know, sometimes you just you just, you just miss it by just that much. Taco, did you play, like, Super Smash Brothers growing up? Oh, I love the Smash series. They had, like, the timed trials you would do, and when you complete them, he'd be like, success! And it always made me feel real You're nice. not talking about the bullseye ones, right? Yeah, You're talking yeah, about, yeah. Like oh, the bullseye. The bullseye. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, those are fantastic. Speaking of fantastic, Nika not feeling all that not great at all. himself. <laughs> Ghastly Breath going to get the last I know. Oof. A little bit accidental here, but now Adapting might have some regrets to not have those beads available any longer. Absolutely. That could potentially be a huge deal here. Last Breath going to be confirmed. Adapting almost certainly not going to make it out of this, and I'll eat my words with a spoon. Adapting somehow just walks away. He's like in the process. I, I didn't want to say anything because I can't tell you how many times that's happened to me. But Caster's Curse is real, Finch. Oh, it absolutely is, apparently. Here we are going, well, he wasted his beads on the back end of a good gank. Cage and last breath, he's dead to rights. Now adapting, will very calmly stroll away on the back end. Good pressure from Maniac to open that space back up for him on that right-hand side. But a good gank, they get away. Energy have come out of that like bandits. Uh, see, it almost kind of makes you hate adapting in a way, though, because I can assure <laughs> you if it was any of us, sure. any of the regulars Absolutely. you know, out there, we, we, we drop our beads in that way, and, and then we look to take on a challenge of, of a circuit Odin, you're dead every day of the week. Yeah, for adapting, it was calculated as he loops back in onto Nika. Special delivery, just a hair off the mark. Now he has no beads to get away from the ultimate, and he's got the tower aggro. This time, adapting will certainly pay the price for it. Nika finds the kill, and now Chariot's here. Maniac is gonna be in a lot of trouble as well. The slow lands, he's waiting for him with the jump, but he wasn't able to time it correctly, but the cage will make up for all errors. And there's a delayed double kill, but a double kill nonetheless for Nika. Much thanks to Cherio for that rotation. And I think that Adapting has a little bit of life regrets. He, he used up all of his life RNG <laughs> on that initial escape. So when he came back around for seconds, no chances of survival when that special delivery comes up short. Yeah, and I imagine that 
he would have used his beads during the Serket Odin gank anyway. So very likely he would have still died to the Nika Cheerio gank no matter what, that, that fight they just had there in solo. But it definitely does set off this chain of events where you wonder what would have happened had he been able to hold on to those. Amilzi just barely avoiding the damage from Dardes, or not Dardes rather, but Cheerio, who has been all over the map. That's the support who twice now has been involved in a fight on the solo side already. Shoutouts to Reinforce Greaves, given Cherio all that tankiness so he can yeah. afford to be involved in so much action this early on. Odin in general, I mean, one of the primary reasons you take Odin into the support role to begin with is, A, it's excellent against energy draft. You want a way to isolate the Alpwash especially because if Yaman is allowed to continue free farming, he's going to pose a lot of issues for Mouse's draft. Uh, later on, and also it keeps Amilzi locked down. That's a good point though, right? Y Yemen has been under essentially no pressure. Both of these mid lane mages, I would say, for that point, have been able to live relatively carefree lives so far. Even the dual lane, aside from maybe those first few minutes of pressure, it's been a little bit slow on this side. Emilito and Darda has been left to their own devices after that initial pressure. So they got to make sure they're being careful. Yes, Discordia can be strong later on in the game, but I mean, ah, oh, Quash is such a nuisance. It just feels like he never dies. And Alpwash, in all fairness, is incredibly hard to kill with his self-sustain. Yes. On top of the fact that uh, Crypt just can slow you down so much if he gets that Gem of Isolation online, the, the anti-heal into the stun frogs. It, it's all over the place with, with the Poochies. Plus, it looks like he might even be working on that Bumbas right now if he wants to upgrade it from the Messenger. So he'll even be that much faster and will be okay, I think, sacrificing a bit of damage if he wants to go for like Gem of Isolation and is looking to play a little bit more utility into any healing that or sustain that might be coming out as well as just looking for the slows. So right now, Yaman is definitely gearing up to be annoying. That is the word I want to use for Alpwash, annoying. If Alpwash is annoying, then usually something's going right for the team that That's has him. That's true though, yes. So there's always that to remember as well. And uh, the action has kind of died down a little bit here. Uh, after that failed gank from adapting for Nika, I think he was really just trying to escalate Maniac's lead to where it would be a little uncontrollable for Nika. They just weren't expecting that turnaround effect to happen, courtesy of Cheerio. And yeah, after they got burned, now Energy a little bit more hesitant about trying to make plays from the solo lane. It's also approaching that period where the solo laners are just a little bit too tanky to want to waste so much time trying to kill. It definitely is not going to be as easy as it once was. Initially, they only had magic defense for one another, but now they both are, both are starting to work rather on some defensive options to make sure that they have some, some answers when those junglers rotate over as well. So it, it definitely won't be as easy as it once was. As Amilzi trades out a little bit with Cheerio, but gets hit by the Strife, has to fall back. Cheerio with the shield might not be done just yet. Aggressive pathing from Amilzi. He thought about it, he wanted to poke up front, see what he could get away with. Mouse immediately choke him off of that alleyway, and now energy. I also like what Yemen did there, by the way, to help zone Amilzi so that Cheerio couldn't afford to go in any further. Had Yemen not done that, we might have seen a mini brawl break out, but instead, energy are gonna be safe and sound for a little while longer because Yemen wasn't about that fighting action. Taco, we saw Alka do the like all blade tree, right? Is adapting going about this one wrong by picking up the boots and the stone cutting sword? That was on Bakasura. <laughs> I'll be off and that was a little bit different. But I mean, we saw some other schools of thought here earlier. Maybe adapting wants to give a, a bit of a try from the minor league. I, I, don't, I don't know if adapting is really all about that uh, that Baka build from earlier today. <laughs> that, that blade life, right? I, I'm sure he'll put it away on a sticky note for later or something like that, you know. For, save it for a rainy day. And well, that's no pun intended for the weather here. It is today. a little bit rainy here in Alfred, Georgia. That's very true. I don't know, it came out of nowhere. Right, we're trying to walk out the door earlier on, but things have cleared up a bit. And maybe they'll clear up for Mouse because things are a little bit closer than they were earlier on in the game. But you can see that charge, that might tell a little bit of that story. You can see that brief spike for energy right around the 12 minute mark or so, but it's come back down and kind of normalized back out. I think a big part of that was Cheerio's play over on the solo side where they found that double kill. And then from then on, it's been relatively quiet. Well, I think some people might have maybe expected Mouse to struggle a little bit more than what they have, considering the recent roster change, bringing in Frostiac and uh, having some things shifted around. Cherio now the support player, and, and Dart is an ADC. But the truth is, uh, Frostiac's actually got to be very familiar with energy by now. He might not have been competing in the SPL up until recently with Mouse bringing him up here. 
but he knows energy. He played against energy for years. And That's true. Maniac, speaking of which, is actually going to have to try and jump out of the tower. Maniac wasn't with the energy roster is what I wanted to elaborate on further, but Frosty X still got plenty of training against them. They drop the Gold Fury, though, do Mouse Sports. Instead, they look for Emil Z. Cherio drops down the cage to try and lock them in, but finds nothing more there. That means that one of their big team fighting ultimates, Cherio, has been dropped. I think they're done looking for their Gold Fury aggression on the back end of that one now, Taco. Not really much more chance of that happening as we saw the supports trading away ultimates. Adapting couldn't quite help lock down Nika. He timed the whirlwind and rage and steal quite well. Timing really is everything in these sort of matches. Now Emilzi wants to go aggressive on the big man Tings oh, and the sudden barely. boom! Almost had big man Tings, but just a little bit too far away. Looks like they'll still get the Aegis out as Emilzi drops his ultimate. They drop both the Apple and Last Breath onto Emilzi, but Adapting finds big man Tings anyway underneath the tier two tower. Able to find a nice kill and looks like he should be out. Cherio's chasing him down, but has no cage. Now Dardes is looping over as well, but Look at the golden blade clear. Purple buff gone immediately. The second that Dardis spotted out, it was adapting on his purple buff. He, he just immediately turned the other way. No Look reason to try and contest it. This is the Taco. burn that they wanted. That's crazy. That was maybe, what, five, six seconds? If even an energy burn it down instantaneously. No way for Mouse, even when they're right there local, to try and contest the objective. And this is energy, isn't it? They find a nice kill in the mid lane on the big man teams. A very clean wrap back around to the gold theory. They grab that one too, right in your face. And suddenly they have a nearly 3,000 gold lead. Well, the only reason any of that was possible is because of the pick onto Big Man Tings. And that's a little bit on Frosty Act there. He was so determined to try and get the trade out with the Mealzy that he abandons Big Man Tings underneath the T2 tower. But when it comes to adapting and energy especially, you can't afford to leave anybody at 10% health or lower by themselves. They're going to run you down and... Oh, no. That was Cheerio. a... That was a good bait from Dardes. I mean, Emilito absolutely took it, but Cherio couldn't find the cage when he jumped over. He was a little bit too short. And now the rest of Energy might be looking Wait. to keep this chase going. Look at Emilzy. He is flying. Zooming. He just... That did not even look human. <laughs> Certainly well, not. Well, he is a god, I guess. That's true. He was moving very, very quickly, but not going to keep up the chase, which I'm surprised by. He's got his, his Nikes on or something. My man is zooming around the map right now. You ever seen that, that police chase down video of, of a guy trying to run away and a cop from like way back in the distance sprints and catches up to them? That's what I think Emilzy would have done had that gone any further, but Energy decided to back off there after a, a nice disengage from Cherio and Dardes. One plus is that they did get Maniac to waste that teleport a, a little bit preemptively, possibly assuming that Emilito was in a lot more danger than what he actually was. And that's mostly just got to be Emil calling, hey, they're diving me. Right, and I think that Emil Z, or not Emil Z, but Emilito did the right thing calling it. It just was that Cheerio had a bit of a an error there in the execution, which, you know, certainly can't happen, you know, especially if Cheerio's playing over there with the high ping or whatever. So it is a little bit off the mark. But this time, much better. Emilito locked down in the cage. Take two, big man Tings. Able to find the nice kill, but adapting an answer back on the Frosty. I can take the trade up against Dardes, blowing him up with the big time crits from the Poison Star and going to keep chasing him down too. Adapting's going to find him in the back crits. line. That blink is all that he needed. Credited for the double kill. Stinge and Torment as well. Going to bring Cherio a little bit too close for comfort to the rest of energy, but he's still alive right underneath the T1 tower. Nika and Big Man Teams doing what they can to peel for him, and Emil Z's not going to be able to follow suit. I'm pretty sure all three of those last hits from adapting crit. He only has poison star taco. It's 100% crit chance. If you're adapting. If you're adapting. <laughs> it's 100% true, I suppose. He did As, get four autos in a row of crit, so it, it four for four, baby. It, it, it felt pretty good, I got to imagine. Dardes, on the other hand, probably not happy as he gets chased down by adapting having a, a, a relatively good game for himself, 4-1-1. and a one. And I am a little bit surprised he went for Poison Star. We see Rage in that slot a lot, but he absolutely made it work as Mouse now pulling the Pyro. Poison Star because there's a lot of squishies on Mouse Sports' team. Frosty IP, Mentings, Dardes, and you need ways to confirm those kills before they have a chance to escape. So I am expecting Adapting to continue on with this crit-based build. I think that also it... it adds even more so into Energy's objective shred. That's a good point. It's also cheaper. Maybe he recognized he backed at a time when it would be more gold efficient and just went ahead and dropped it. His Maniac 
gets CC chained all the way into oblivion. Frostiac finds the kill, but Emilito wants blood in return, adapting his Frostiac, but he's able to jump right out of there. Cage locks down four, but Cheerio might be in the wrong part of town. There's a big old ultimate coming through from the off wash and putting in good damage on Nika. That might have been a little bit better for energy. It had adapting not overshot the sonic boom so heavily. It was too he far. was just trying to cut through the entire team fight, didn't realize that he was gonna slam head first into the fire giant. He actually ended up tanking around half of his health from FG alone. And unfortunately, not only is he taking damage, but he's not in position right away to start following up with those auto attacks. As we said, them crits are coming out, so they would have liked to have him. He's now working on the short sword. Perhaps this will be the rage coming out from adapting, and we'll see it start getting stacked up there. But he certainly got some options. Crit, crit Mercury, man, that's... Crit Mercury and the splash auto attacks from Golden Blade, Golden Bow, whatever you want to call it. That's about as good as it gets. It might end up being a, a Death Ringer simply because could he be, has yeah. the Poison Star already, so he might just want that big swing uh, of crit damage. And Death Ringer's got a pretty nice passive to do it. Stone Cutting as well is the primary reason why Adapting's able to build this way, because the Stone Cutting is going to cut into those prots already, so you can afford to just lean heavy-handed into Right, crit. to make up maybe for not having much pen, I suppose. You can, the Stone Cutting would kind of do that same thing for him. That could certainly work as Adapting has so far done rather well in the game, but last fight, not quite able to follow up off the ultimate, but either way, energy's still feeling comfortable. Only about 2,000 gold up at this point as Amelzy Ward's Gold Fury. Perhaps they'd like to change things by starting this up. They have all their ultimates, beads on everyone. No teleport for Maniac, though, if he wants to come join. There's just so much tension on the map. Uh, there's not really a massive lead in either direction. Sure, energy are up by a little bit of gold, but 23 minutes and climbing into a match, uh, 3k gold is practically nothing at all. Not a big deal as Adapting drops beads to Frostiac, who very calmly takes them and goes on his way. Amilzi can't even find the Magi's cloak from Frostiac in return, though. So a very good fight for Frostiac, I would say, just to find those beads from Adapting. And Frostiac did not even have his... So it's very nice that he's able to keep the Magi's cloak intact. This Magi's as well is a great deterrence factor for Frostiac in terms of keeping energy off of him. The one big thing, though, that we haven't really seen come into effect yet is Yaman on this Alp Wash. Yeah. I do feel like a lot of these fights have been reserved towards the side lanes. So we've seen Emilito get involved. We've seen Maniac, plenty of Nika and, and Dardes, but nowhere near... Uh, I, I don't think that Yaman's really had much of an opportunity to jump into the action, and usually when he does come about, it's both sides tending to have, or the fight's already dissipated, or they're just not interested. Well, this time Yaman should certainly get a chance to have a big time impact. A fight around the Gold Fury, but the Gold Fury not even leashed. Emilito pulls it now, with Frostiac making his rotation in for the middle lane. He's being patient, hanging back, as Energy have not full on committed to the Gold Fury at all. They're trying to force the hand of Mouse to overcommit just a bit, but Maniac blinks into the backside. Stygian and Torment gets responded by the Whirlwind of Rage and Steel. Maniac being blown up quite quickly, able to jump away, but Frostiac is gonna punish with the last breath. Last breath might have been tossed into nobody though, because Mouse aren't able to find anybody in from energy that they can possibly try and spread that poison to. Mouse wow. will have a slight advantage here, but it's energy who are still looking to pull this Gold Fury. That's nuts, isn't it? Energy just lost a member essentially for free. Still go for it, and Mouse Sports steal the Gold Fury away. Of course they do. Now in the 5v4, they chase out Emilio's and adapting on the right-hand side. Already falling back is Emilito and Yaman. Energy may be biting off more they can chew, and we have a tie game at 25 and a half minutes. The fact that energy go for that goal fear in the first place, it, it just feels like a slap in the face to Mouse. A direct challenge, essentially, of are you guys going to try to step to us? And, and Mouse, they're just like, sure. But I can't really call it a, a true 4v5 engagement because I do believe that one Mouse member did end up backing there. So it was essentially a four, four for a four man team fight on both ends. Sure. Well, in the end, Mouse Sports at least steal away the Gold Fury and the game now relatively even. So we turn our attention toward the right-hand side of the map. Why not, Taco? We're getting rather late into this one. 26 minutes. So Fire Giant certainly could be looked at in any moment. There's a rather large wave on the left-hand side, and that might push into the Tier 1. One more thing to keep your eye on, as that might end up being a clear advantage in favor of energy. But we'll certainly have a chance to see as the rest of the team grouped up around the Fire Giant. What I'm curious about is how... 
or when, I should say, that energy is going to choose to try and pull at this fire giant. I definitely think that they have more than enough objective secure and burst to take down fire giant before mouse have a chance to even process what is happening. They, they just need a, a way to divert the attention of mouse. And I think that they can accomplish that by just sending somebody else to the upside of the map, maybe a Mealzy or something. I don't want to say a Melito or Yatman because I don't think either of them will be able to escape on their own accord. But sure. ad adapting or a Mealzy would probably have the best opportunities to actually try and run away from anybody from Mouse should they look to rotate. Now, Nika has the Hide Anemian Lion. Is that enough to answer this crit that's being started up here from adapting? It's not a ton that they've committed into it, as he did finish the Deathbringer, and Imolito has avoided it so far, but is it going to be enough as Pyromancer now gets looked at? Some nice shots from Dardis. Actually catches a Mealzy with the Persistent Gust. They're going to throw the Apple perfectly into the backside. Finds a Mealzy, brings him low past the Aegis duration, but the horse doesn't get him far enough away. Imolito juking for his life, but Big Man Tings hunts him down. Dardis is going to need a little bit of backup here. Milzy trying to help buy some time for his hunter, but it's no good. Dardis already claimed the life of Melito, and he's looking to keep up the pursuit. What a good fight! Cherry is going to bring down Yamin. Maniac's low as well. Frosty has to get the credit for that one. And now with three, mem four members, excuse me, of energy already fallen, Mouse Sports looking to make this fire giant their own. Well, there's something in the water in Europe right now, Taco. SK Gaming able to find one game over Rival. And now here, Energy are up four members down for zero on their side. Mouse Sports grab the Fire Giant and a chance maybe to start breaking the base of Energy. A 4K gold lead could certainly get expanded if they're able to force down some towers. Energy, though, no slouches themselves. And they've got an op quash to play defense. This game's certainly not over, but what a development if you're a Mouse Sports fan. Yemen was just smothered in, in that engagement. And yes. I'm also amazed that Dardes didn't end up going down sooner. Had Emilito not taken such a big burst of damage, I think Dardes ends up getting picked off in the midst of three members from Energy because Mouse had to swing over to provide backup for, for Dardes there. But, but Yamin just got blown up so quickly on this outwash that Energy just didn't really have a chance to try and get any real mage damage involved. Is very. I think that Cherio and, and Big Man Tings are the ones that I really have to look at for that fight. And you're right, Dardis survives for a long time, but it's a great cage from Cherio. I think he found Yaman and Imolito in the back end, and then Tings lands the apple in between them both. And then the Aegis is a little bit too early, I think, for Imolito, so he takes the back end of that apple explosion damage, brings him very, very low. Just an excellent fight from Mouse. And now they have a real opportunity to start putting the screws to energy a little bit. Tier 2 tower in left should certainly come down to the pressure from Dardes to add a little bit more gold to the pockets. But just look at how Mouse are positioning themselves for this T2 Tower Siege. It was only Dardes and Big Man Teams was actually cautious, standing in the lane. Everyone else was playing Lookout. And the same is probably going to happen here in mid as Energy grouped up around their mid Phoenix. Zero interest whatsoever in trying to contest these T2 Towers. Energy have already decided we're making our final stands on these Phoenixes. Well, right now is when Mouse need to forget that it's energy across the road, right? I, because I think that what you're alluding to is that Mouse were still being a bit cautious in, on that Tier 2 side. Uh, and that can sort of happen sometimes when you're up against the big boys. Even though Mouse are certainly a very capable SPL team in their own right, it's hard to deny the, the, the history, the gravitas of that energy esports when it's on the screen across from you. So you got to forget it. Right now, you are the ones in control. Mouse clearly in the driver's seat, nearly six slotted everywhere. They got to play like it. One thing to note, though, that, that is really important here is uh, this gold lead isn't as devastating as you might believe it to be, and neither is the experience difference because it, at, we're approaching the 31-minute mark, and both sides, everyone's pretty much already at level 20. I, experience there. gold, not really as relevant as it might have been beforehand. Mouse are going to have to continue to find repeat engages like what they did before sieging that fire giant in order to topple energy in this one. It's, it's definitely an advantage, don't get me wrong, that Mouse have done a great job executing their, their team fights so far. But once slip up, and we've seen how quickly games have, have spiraled back into the other team's favor. They absolutely could. And Energy have some tools to get it done, Taco. I'm, I'm, I'm with you for sure. Mid-Guardian there for, for Maniac. Two Spectral Armors, it would appear, on Maniac and Emilzy as well to try and slow down Dardes. 
who's been putting out quite a bit of damage. Not quite on the same level, though, as where Big Man Tings is, but they certainly want to try and limit the impact of the crits coming out from this Jingwei. Look to Amilzi and Maniac to try and cause some problems for this Hunter for Mouse. And I like what Amilzi's doing right now, just scouting the area, trying to get some deep wards going so that they can get a better idea of which direction Mouse is going to approach from. It's just the fact that Amilzi is too tanky to die unless energy or unless Mouse really feel like committing to the Amaterasu, but even then, typically not worth it because it would cost more than just one ultimate, I think, to bring down Amilzi at this stage. It would not be easy. If they catch him out by a, by a significant margin, like there's four or five members of Mouse there and no one from energy is nearby to help Amilzi, even with Dazzling Offensive, he might get punished. But look at this. Mouse Sports, yes, they grabbed the Tier 2 Towers, but they weren't able to do much else on the back end of that Fire Giant buff. Now, 40 seconds till it respawns. Energy should be able to come out and play defense around the Fire Giant if they like their fight there. Or they might just decide to bunker down with this op wash, the long range artillery, and play from the base instead. Yamin and Bimentings both have a lot of space control in, in their god kits, but it's in different ways. What is this? Energy actually looking to loop all the way around Mouse, going way deep. They're going to catch him from the backside entirely. Well, they're right. It's heavily warded on the right-hand side, so this certainly could end up working out in their favor. In fact, what? They have Mouse no are going to have no idea. How could they? There's no way. They're just expecting there's Energy no to not be contesting this. Just Taco, there's no chance that this could work, right? Blink in on the backside from Maniac. Stygian Torment hits everybody. Yemen drops a huge ultimate on the backside as well already. Energy bring down the house. Fire Giant coming in as well. The loop around should never have worked. There's no way. But Energy Esports get it done. It does come at a price, however. And Melito will end up falling here for Energy, but I don't think they seem to care about it in the slightest. Adapting, still looking to chase down Cheerio. Cheerio's running for his life inside of his T1 tower, but Finch, four men strong with the fire giant. That's a worth if you ask me. Oh, it absolutely is. You have got to be kidding me with this energy squad, man. They, this is just the kind of stuff that they do on a regular basis. Mouse Sports put an absurd amount of wards on the right-hand side. It's overkill over there, right? If anyone from Energy are nearby, they're going to know about it. The only way we don't, guys, the only way we don't know is if Energy loops around the entire map through the Tier 1 and Tier 2 tower and sneak in behind us. But who does that? Energy do, apparently. Pro players do, and that is the threat of timers being known. Because I can assure you that play doesn't happen unless Energy know the respawn timer exactly. It was perfectly timed. And they waited as well uh, until Cherio had started pulling the objective. As soon as Mouse took the leashing or took the aggro of that fire giant, all hell breaks loose. Yam is just dropping his ult. And inside of the crypt as well, when you've got these Alpwash spirits flying all around you, it, I can't even imagine the level of chaos that ensued in Mouse's comms. There's no way to communicate that quickly. As Imolito, unfortunately, is uh, he's in the Bermuda Triangle all by himself and no one there to help Mouse Sports very nicely catch him out. But I mean, Taco, I mean, that was it, it was, it was perfectly timed, perfectly positioned and executed. The waves had met in the middle lane already, so they weren't gonna be revealed on minions as they crossed through the mid lane tower too. Just a, just a perfect play. Mouse never had a chance to see it coming. No, these guys are nuts. And it Absolutely is insane. a heavy cost. Certifiably crazy. Nice job though on the pick for Emelino because that forces energy to wait out at least another minute of this fire giant. They're probably going to yell at Emil if he dies one more time like that. Oh, absolutely. Th that is going to hurt the team. They lost him in the Fire Giant pusher. They certainly could have pushed for more. And now they'd like to have him for their Phoenix defense. Even with the Fire Giant, it's Mouse with the 5v4 advantage. So they could be the ones pushing in. Cage comes down. Emilzi absorbs the apple. That keeps things healthy for the team. They pull in two with Stitching and Torment. But Stripe is great from Tings to bring Emilzi and Maniac low. Maniac a little bit too low. Has to jump away on the right-hand side. Gets away from Dardes. But the mid lane Phoenix will pay the price. Sonic, boom, though, rips through the fight. And Adapting wants to keep things going. Dardes looking to lead the charge here onto Adapting. And Teleport. you got to keep in mind, the rest of Energy is still looking to collapse onto Mouse Forge. They're being pincered right now between Adapting and their entire team. And now Adapting can re-engage. Maniac finds Big Man Tings. Tyrio drops. Frostiac has nowhere to go. Adapting may 
fall to the crits from Dardes, but Yemen finds himself a double kill. Emilito still alive, and that should be all they need. Nika's gonna try and trade his life out for Emilito in the back end. No, he can't find it. And energy can start pushing down the middle lane. Nika's only hope right now is to pray that there won't be enough time here for energy to try and close out without a creep wave. There are fire minions. But Emil, he's able to lifesteal a little bit off of them. That's going to keep him away from kill threshold. Anika's clutches. He still has relics too, though. This is taking a while, though, to burn this Phoenix, but Energy don't really seem to care. Finch, they're looking for the game in. They should go for it. They absolutely should. Emilito still has Aegis and Beads. They drop down the crypts to try and control them. Nika has Whirlwind of Rage and Steel to pull three away, but Emilito, undeterred on the backhand side, is free to rain in the damage. Emilzi finds the day aside. Energy Esports with the Fire Giant wraparound take the game over Mouse. Talk about a turnaround though, Finch. That one fire giant play, whoever was the shot call from energy that made that decision, kudos to you because that was incredible. Man, it's my job to have words for this and I don't know <laughs> that I do, Taco. What a play from energy. It's just, it's, I, it's what you expect. It's what put them on the top in season two and three is plays like that. We do not see that very often. An excellent call from them. It works out perfectly. And to be fair, Finch, the only time you should ever be speechless is when phenomenal plays like that are yes. being made. <laughs> yes, and that was a phenomenal play from them. The MVP, which we cannot know, is whoever made that call. We did not know that at this time, whoever it was the MVP. But not knowing that, I think you can still vote for the MVP based on their in-game performance and what we did see. Maybe adapting. I think, I, I think adapting is so. probably the closest call that you can make for the MVP vote here. And mostly because of the fact that not only was he helping to control a lot of those team fights via pincers, much like what we saw in that last engagement, but he got off so many great ganks early on that helped alleviate not only solo lane pressure for Maniac, but also some excellent picks onto Dardas that really slowed down Mouse's role at the start of this match. It, it felt like adapting was really the main member from Energy, keeping Mouse in check. I think so too, adapting would certainly be a good vote for the MVP, but ultimately up to you out there in Mixer Chat. Let's get it back over to their desk, though, to hear their thoughts on that great game. Hear my thoughts? I'll tell you what, Energy, that was a world championship play, Agro. Insane. Uh, just absurd. I mean, it, it. Energy, what always made them so scary is yep. that they were better than you at the little things, and they were also more creative than you. And, and that's what, you know, in the last few years, I think, choice, like, they, they, they get the opportunity, they will take it, but... They haven't, they haven't had that same creativity because yeah. everyone is caught up and they had roster changes and it's tough to do. This is, this is energy just being, understanding Smite at a deeper level and, and just being better. I mean, this is- This, this is the is, point. This is unreal. So with this, Mouse had rotated all the way, put deep wards down, had full vision of everything. So what they do is they rotate between tier one and tier two, making sure the minion wave is not coming through at the same time. There is a gap where you can't be seen there. They flank all the way around the back and then get the dream scenario. Look, I mean, the positioning there for Mouse, they've all got their backs yep. turned. They're waiting for energy to come in. I mean, that is, you want to talk about cluttered comps in moments where you don't know what's happening? Yeah. It's whoever is the first one to get hit by Stygian Torment going, what is happening? Like, oh no! Help, help, help. And, and everyone starts yelling and you don't know where anyone is. You don't have ward coverage on that side. You can't blame Mouse. I mean, they looked both ways three times. They took one step out in the street and, the and, a, hit him from and a spaceship hits them. I mean, oh, it, okay. like, how are you supposed to look for that? That's true. Energy, though, what a great game one. I mean, Mouse, through game one, let's just go back through the game. Obviously, Energy come out on top, and that's because of that play towards the end there, which has shown time and time again the creativity that this team really does have and can have. Adapting will get MVP here, but got to give some credit to Mouse here, too. Mouse looked great. It, I, I don't even know if Adapting's MVP here. Whoever shot called that call for me is the real MVP. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's just, th this is an encouraging loss for Mouse. I'm sure they're yeah. very sick of hearing that because I feel like I've said that a lot <laughs> so far in this fall split. Same as SK, so they've heard it a little bit less. I, I, I do think that, that Mouse is really looking like a better team right now in, the, yeah. in this role swap. It, it's working. It's risky, but it's working thus far. Energy though, back on, they're good at playing, they're good at trying to slice through teams, but they're also good at the creative sense of, well, the only difference is that some of the teams don't give them those windows, and Mouse, very small window, it was tiny. What, the only way you they can broke that, the window, the window I mean, was closed, the that? window was closed. Award it your red buff, award it your own back harpies for safety against a team that's on the defense, you, right. you can't really do that, can you? Sometimes, sometimes Crazy. you've got pocket kings, and they just have pocket aces. You know what I mean? You, that's sometimes that's just the, the way it goes. They rivet a full house, that's for sure.